the Lounge of Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. And I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest today is Philip Salvin, who is founder and owner of Rise Up Surf Retreats. So welcome to the Lounge, Philip. We're so excited to have you here today. Uh, thank you so much. Very excited to be here, you know? Thank yes. You yeah. yeah, absolutely. And again, if you hear any, you are by the beach. So if we hear any beautiful beach ambiance sounds, that is what Brilliant. you're hearing, everybody. So cool. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. It's so awesome. And I'm so excited to chat with you here today and just hear more about just rise up, but also just, you know, talk about what you're doing, you know, to keep um, travel industry, you know, sustainable and how others in the travel industry can do the same, but also touch on, you know, the marketing that you and your team does, because it's really incredible stuff and um, all that good stuff. So we're going to get into it all. But first, can you just share more about your background and just how did you start this company? Um, well, I'm my name is Philip, as we know, I'm from Barbados originally, and company started by, you know, a love for travel. So I ended up going to university in England. That gave me a jump off point to start traveling around the world. And one of my destinations was Nicaragua. So at one point I went to Nicaragua, then I came again, then I came again, and I decided to move to Nicaragua and um, made it my home about 17 years ago. And during the course of that, did many different things, ran a hostel, tour company, all these type of things. Um, it was based in a city called Leon. And, you know, I grew up around the ocean, massive love for surfing. So I think after, you know, a few years living in the city life, I was thinking, okay, what, what can I do to, to get back to the beach or get closer to the beach again? And I still was surfing a lot at that time, but, you know, the beach was kind of far. And yeah, one day I was surfing with friends. The name Rise Up came from, you know, if anyone who does surf knows that some of the nicest times to be in the ocean is at sunrise. And, you know, with the sunrise, you don't know what the waves are going to be quite like yet, especially if you're out there when it's dark. Um, so one sunrise session, just hanging with some friends. And I was like, oh, I watched the sunrise behind this volcano. Our first logo was actually a sunrise behind a volcano, but we changed it since then. And just was like, I mean, it was do something that's going to be called rise up and rise up surf. So kind of started with that moment in the ocean um, here in Nicaragua. And then a few uh, more events just led to, to us starting. I've talked to a friend, made a logo, rented a house by the beach, came up with the idea. I was teaching yoga at the time anyway. And this was like, okay, we're going to do surf and yoga. And yeah, that was almost 13 years ago now. So it's pretty, it was quite a while ago. So yeah. Um, and yeah, this just kind of went from there. Just me and another friend, we just started it, reached out to people we knew and had a couple guests each year. And then it kind of from about 10 years ago was like became the full time, uh, a full time kind of endeavor. Yeah. That's so. so cool. Oh, that's awesome. Taking your passion and making it just your yeah, everyday passion. reality. Yeah. Passion and experience always. I worked growing up in Barbados, you always, your side jobs were always like on boats or in restaurants and all that type of stuff. So always around people. And, and then as growing older, you know, you kind of, yeah, doing the yoga, doing all that type of, you know, the nature. And, and it started also because of, of, for a big love of Nicaragua. So I was, when people were coming at the first, I was like, oh, I really wanted to show them, you know, the volcanoes and, and the people and the culture as well as the, the surf and things like that. So it was kind of a, a mixture. That's super cool. That's really cool. And yeah. on that too. So then you started, um, can, well, you started giving back also, you found ways and opportunities to give back, which a lot of times, like, like you'll hear me say, like, talk about like sustainability, you know, in the, in the travel industry. And that's become such a huge thing where there's just been this huge shift. And we can chat about that too, with just after the pandemic, where a lot of people just wanted more wellness travel. And I'm sure you might be seeing that too, you know, like more like yoga retreats and that. So what yeah. has that been like recently? Have you seen a change happening? Yeah, I think it's been happening on both sides. Cause it's been happening also on our side as rise up or as myself and and the crew that we work with um you know we've gotten more and more i don't know how can i say the evolution of rise up is actually going to be more have more wellness incorporated um and things like that so and then giving back i mean it's always been a part of rise up so it's like when i started rise up i was like it was for the love of nicaragua and the people so no matter what happened we we're always going to have that integrated um and, you know, when it went from just me and one person to, let's say, 40 people, um, you know, it was, a, it was really important for us to always have 
you know, do things for the community, with the community, also for, for, for the environment too, whether that be beach cleanups or, you know, sea turtle projects or environmental education programs that we ran in school at one time, um, things like that. So, so it's always been there and, and it's been really amazing to see how many people want to get involved in giving back and are interested in it. Um, so we, yeah, I mean, we can say that we start a, a, a NGO called Rise Up Kids International, which started out of a need, a necessity, because we were finding it very hard to get consistent funding because we couldn't get the NGO set up in Nicaragua itself. Um, so we was talking to a guest and we were like, you know, all these people want to give us money and they talk about tax deductions, et cetera, et cetera. And we're trying to figure out like, okay, how can we, you know, get this money, you know, from them to us in a way that's easy and, and put it into the projects, you know? So mm-hmm. this her name is Heather and she was like, I'll help you and I'll get you an NGO set up in the United States. And three of us can be the founders, me and Karina and, and her. And it was literally like three months later, we had like an official NGO in the States. So 501C. And then we called it Rise Up Kids because our big project was going to be to revamp a school. So that was when we we're like, okay, it's going to be called Kids, but it's it's just a global, you know, we'll do, we'll do all kinds of stuff. So yeah. That's so, that's so awesome. And so when travelers come and stay with you, do they do things to help with that or support it? You know, it's a, it's a bit of a mixture because we'll, it's, you know, cause I'm not in a bad way, but you know, to take people who are here for a week and then they go and do, it's a, it's a tricky one with the, with the longer term projects, unless people have a specific skill, but what we'll do is we'll, you know, take people by to show them what's going on or, um, they're very lucky that a lot of the people that work within, you know, with us or in the resorts and stuff, especially up here in North Nicaragua, they're a benefit from the project. So we'll do like a little presentation and let people know how they can donate, take them by. Uh, and naturally, when you're on a retreat with us, you know, we go out horse riding. We're always on the mission to find waves. We do all this stuff. So people are out and about in the community a lot because it's very safe and easy. So people get to interact with the local people and see, you know, examples of where projects are or where um, where they might be and things like that so so it's a bit of a mixture yeah it's not um depends on the time of year and the project that might be going on you know Mm -hmm. yeah just finding those ways and just educating and all that good stuff more like an awareness and Mm -hmm. people can actually like see and know that you know these are actual projects that or you know um the community the connection to the community and they can see there's a great need and and yeah type of stuff so yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And like in our world with travel advisors and stuff, I know that there's, I hear all the time about how advisors are adding things or like doing even like the ocean cleanup or spending a couple hours learning about something and then helping or like, even if it's, you know, like turtle hatching on the beach and that everybody wants to do, you know, there's so many things. And so I think it's cool always trying to think of like, how can I incorporate something into a traveler's itinerary, you know, and, and not force it, but make it encouraging and just the awareness side, which I think is so important in the industry and I think we're going to keep seeing more and more of that which is cool yeah I think it's you know incredibly important I think that with that you say as the awareness is growing and people want more of that that's a positive thing for you know NGOs and people private people everyone who you know live in areas like this that want to you know invest in in the local community environment you know for us you know especially yeah we're very very lucky to be in that position um but yeah that's it yeah sounds like a beautiful community I'm adding I Got to add Nicaragua to my list because yeah, you have to. It's a great so place. awesome. Yeah, it's a great place to be. And then like from the whole sustainability side, like we try to, you know, we have, you know, pair, you know, hire as many local people as possible, get as many ingredients as we can from, you know, the local area or within the local country, as many services, you know, our transport, boat drivers, all that type of stuff. So that's kind of like a, a big, a big part of it as well to try to make sure, but limited as well because of the, um, you know, we are in a third world country and there's not a big drive or from the, let's say from the powers that be the government stuff to, you know, for like sustainable energy or, you know, trash collection, all that stuff we have to do ourselves. you know? So we, you know, we collect all everything at the resorts and everything. We have to take it like 40 miles away for it wow. to be sorted. And we have to do all that ourselves. but you know, obviously we don't want it here on the beach and, you know, yeah, we ever want to. Yeah. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. That is great. Well, it's cool. The commitment to 
keep serving the community. It's, it's just so, it's so powerful. And, um, and I don't know if you use that in like your marketing, but I want to talk about marketing too, because like I said earlier, your team, it's really cool. Like if, okay. So anybody listening, if you go, we'll put in the show notes, their website and Instagram, really, really cool stuff. And so when it comes to marketing and when you first like started and how, how have, have you had to find ways to set yourself apart from similar um, travel experiences or are you just trying to aim and find your perfect traveler and then they typically find you pretty organically or how does that usually work for you and your team? Well, I mean, if you want to start from when we started with 13 years ago, it's probably Instagram <laughs> way <Facebook>. different, <laughs> not, not as relevant. So we definitely were on more of the word of mouth type of train. Um, but as you know, part of, you know, one of our, one of you know our vision and stuff is to always keep evolving and try to you know try to keep seeing what's going on out outside in the world and see how that can benefit us to to keep evolving so i've always been like i don't know for example when someone said to me oh your website this is let's say 10 years ago isn't responsible on a phone and that was the first time i had to tell okay we're gonna get a website that responsible on a phone found a person um you know as instagram facebook all those things start to really become, especially now Instagram, you know, we always try to have a good content creator with us. And I mean, like, you know, for the photos and things like that. Um, ultimately, though, I think it's always been the word of mouth thing, you know, and I, like, I think what set to us apart, I, someone asked me, you know, I've had that question before, and it's always just been like how we treat the people and the love and, and passion we have for, for the, the guests that come on our retreats. And I think that echoes through, through everything we try to do. Um, and then just luckily have an amazing team who work with us for marketing, you know, Ashley and, and we just try to communicate well together between us and yeah, just try to stay there at, you know, current and not get left behind. So it's, it's always changing. So that's the crazy thing about it, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Just try, like consistency and having a good team. You know, I would say those two, um, and staying with the priority that every guest who comes to stay with us has an amazing time. So that when we do post a beautiful photo, it's not just, oh, that's a beautiful photo, but what's the actual experience? Like there's actually like people can say, okay, well, that's a beautiful photo. And if you actually dig deeper, people will be like, well, it's actually an amazing experience, you know? Cause that's like, so obviously the, the most important thing, like how time, how people spend their time and their money is very, very valuable um, in this day and age. And we would like take that very seriously, so. <laughs> yeah, it's so important. Like the testimonial side of it is, do you ever ask um, people for reviews or do you use um, like a testimonial at all that part of your marketing? Um, we do to a certain extent, not every single week, um, but there will, you know, there's times where we'll be like, okay, we want to get like reviews on video or things that for, for specific marketing purposes. Um, and then we always encourage people to, if they feel or whatever, want to please leave us a review on all the, the main places. But you know, we just try to say the most important thing, share with your friends and, and in your world, you know, and in this day and age, you know, social media is so important and all the, all the facets around online stuff. So we try to make sure people, if they want, they can have, you know, some really nice content to take home and then they can share it. And that's kind of like, that added adds on to it, you know, because then sometimes people could tell a friend, but then they share a photo or, you know, the networks are way bigger now than they used to be. Um, it read because of social media, which is pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can just imagine all the TikToks and Instagram that come out of, especially just like the type of experience that you provide is so like so much content you can come out and people want to share that. They're like, look at this thing I just did. Like I just disconnected a little bit, but now here's everything that I did. Like it's, <laughs> I can totally see it. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, in the very beginning, or not in the beginning, up, up until maybe five, six years ago, we didn't, we were like anti having internet at on the retreats, which was pretty funny. Now it's changed that it's not a, an issue anymore. Obviously, like it's about being present, human connection is, is a big part of it, but it's just the reality that people need to be connected and, and you know, it's things like that. So it's kind of, it's cool. It's cool the transition from, from that to, to now. Yeah. Well, have you noticed like a little bit of that difference with just the remote? Like there's a lot more expats and remote working and is oh. that kind of seen like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially pre post COVID, you know, mm -hmm. you know, not necessarily coming on retreats with us, but um, you know, make sure maybe someone will come on a retreat and then they'll end up extending their stay with us or in another place for another month because they're working remotely, you know? So obviously like having good internet and Wi-Fi is important on the, 
these days more so than it ever has been. Um, so obviously we try to make sure we have that working as best as we can within the limitations of third world countries. <laughs> yeah. Within the limitations. Yeah. I know it's, it's kind of funny. Cause it's like, you want to disconnect, but also like, well, you do kind of need, need that little bit of connection just so you make sure you can keep doing your work if you needed to or something. I think the good thing in our retreat is we keep people quite busy if they want to be. So mm-hmm. they have a lot of surfing, there's the yoga, there's the breath work, there's the surf theories, there's the meal times where everyone's together, all that stuff. So by the time people, you know, people's screen time probably gets limited no matter what, just because they're yeah. all hanging out with people, you know, quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, such a great thing. And then, do you see a lot? Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and I was going to say and the nature, you know, just beautiful. Yeah. To yeah. Oh yeah. You don't really want to be like this when there's just this beautiful good thing going on. So totally. Yeah. Um, so you see a lot of repeat clients. So too, don't you like a lot of, or do you have a lot of travelers that come back? We do. Yeah, we do. We've had, I would say year to year, we get quite a regular uh, return clientele. And then, you know, we've had someone stay with us, let's say the 17 times, um, you know, or maybe two people, 17 times over wow. from the beginning to now. Yeah. We do get a lot of returns, you know, average three, four times, you know? So yeah, it's very, that's like the biggest compliment. So it means that something's going right, you know? And yeah. And that's also like gives us motivation to do things in new places at certain times, because then people, Oh, I've stayed with you five times in this place. If you go somewhere else, we'll, we'll follow you, you know? And that's, that's nice too. That's super cool. That's so awesome. 17. That's amazing. You know, I, I love that. And, and, um, a final question here for you. So we kind of already talked about this is, but just with, um, not necessarily again, not sustainable travel, but just for what you're seeing on your side, are there any trends or like how you just mentioned how people will say, if you go, you know, somewhere else, we'll follow you there. Do you have any plans of expanding based off of what you're seeing or trends or adding more like yoga type stuff or what are you seeing really? So the expansion I would say is coming, the evolution is coming more from within where we're working already It's particularly in Nicaragua, where we're going to um, focus on running retreats in two different locations and expanding our offerings within what we have on the retreats, which will be, let's call it more wellness, more breath work, um, some additional stuff to the surf coaching program, like surf skating. Um, and yeah, just like leveling up what we already offer um, to to then, you know, maybe we'll do things in other places as time goes on again. We already run retreats in Costa Rica and Guatemala, and we've done one in Barbados and things like that. So, so the evolution is that to, to just make it a bit more um, holistic, what we're already doing, um, which is in line with, yeah, like you can say 13 years ago, I was 27, now I'm 40. And, you know, it's a different, like trying to add more value to what people get and have people leave retreats even more like, fulfilled and nourished you know because it's already so amazing but we're thinking oh maybe we can tweak these few things and add those in um yeah so that's kind of where we're at at this precise moment um, yeah that's cool trend wise yeah it's hard to say you know i think traveling i think people want to be going on healthier trips or trips that give back more um ours is you know small group travel if you had to put a name on air and our retreats are you know let's say there'll be up to 12 people on a typical retreat week maximum. So, um, so it's a very intimate personalized experience, um, compared and it's called all inclusive, but sometimes we get the question of, is that a staff member or is that a guest? Cause you know, some, especially like the, the main hosts and the surf coach, you know, we're eating together and surfing together and hanging out. So we're there to like support the guests, but sometimes people were like, Oh, is that, you know, <laughs> they're also yeah. having a meal and they're like, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah that's cool though it's like uh it's well it's probably those times you know when you do there's certain types of travel and i can see this happening when you if you attend like rise up is that you're you don't want to le- like you get really sad when you actually have to leave because those people become so close yeah like, which is really cool it's really cool and so many connections get made mm-hmm. from you know people who've been on retreats together and then you know later on i'll see them you know on trips other places or they'll come back together or in some cases, some of the guests who stayed with us in the early days, they're friends now, you know, it's like 10 years later. And, and yeah, and some people even just changed their whole life after coming on a retreat. They're like, oh, yeah. okay, I'm just gonna, they've been at that point already. And then coming and seeing like a new, a new, not a new, not that we offer anything really different, but it's like, you know, I think just moving from their 
day-to-day life to you know surrounded by nature and positive people yeah. good connection I'm change. sure it's so different it's, where are most of your the travelers is there a specific destination that a lot of them come to or geographic location uh, well, so our rise up started in Nicaragua for the um so that's where we were based for most of the existence and then since like two years pre-covid we started doing retreats in other places but now we've kind of shifting back to really focus a lot more um on nicaragua so our next year and when you, when people look on our calendar you'll see it's going to be 90 percent of the retreats are going to be offered in nicaragua for this coming year and then we'll start doing retreats again i um, in other places after the next year um again so and so where do you like most of the travelers come from like are they coming from all over the world or do you see a lot of them come from like the states or is there specific areas uh all over the world in, in a small percentage um uh, but mostly from the states in Canada, most, mostly north, just because of where the flights are to Central America. And potentially if we do retreats in Asia and stuff in the future, I guess we'll maybe get more Europeans, things like that. But um, yeah, my my partner's Swiss and, you know, we have a couple key members of the team that are from, you know, Mark Ashley, who's head of our marketing. She's from Australia, um, you know, guy from Spain. Our chef is Argentinian. So we have like a a mixture of people work with us that are from all over. And then we have like connections with a few people all over the world, but the majority of our guests are coming from the state. So, which yeah. is why it's really important for us to get that NGO in, um, in the United States. Cause that means it's so, it so easy for people to, to donate and help support us, you know, as a quote. So that's really Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. really cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. And actually, we're not done yet because I didn't tell you this, but we do rapid fire questions of travel related questions. Perfect. So I'm going awesome. to throw them to you. Okay. Right. So there's, I think there's six of them here. So first one is what is your favorite destination you've traveled to? Indonesia. Nice. <laughs> I like it. And yeah. then a little bit of a spin on this one is what do you think is the most underrated destination to visit? Oh, that's a good one. Um, that's a good one. I'm going to have to say right now, Nicaragua. I know that's a biased answer, nope, but that works. I think it's, um, I think it's underrated because all the countries around it get a lot more hype. And not just for retreats or surfing, but I think Nicaragua has a lot to offer. Um, it, should, it should go back up there for all types of travelers. Yeah. Well, after everything you've told us, I think that's a very fair answer because it sounds amazing. <laughs> so it's a great answer. Yeah, um, and another question here is, what is the best meal you've ever had while traveling? Oh my goodness, there's so many. <laughs> that's, like, uh, that's, a, that's a really hard one. I would say consistently the best meals are, are were in India. That's the truth. Mm. Like in like a tally um, and also the different, the tallies that are in Southern India compared to North India. And so, you know, the, and it's very vegetarian based and I'm not a hard, a strict vegetarian, but veg I do enjoy. So India is hands down the best food ever had in the world. India, Sri Lanka, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, that. Yeah, I know. I've that is on. That is another thing on my bucket list is the true Indian like street food. Oh, yeah, sounds amazing. I mean, a lot of people would get, um, you know, they come back and like, oh, India. True. Yeah. But but if you can get over, you know, your what they call the Delhi belly or whatever, and you bring yeah into the the food, there's a lot of just simple rules. If you see someone eating there or people eating there, it's probably good. And if you go to the place and no one's there, you probably want to skip it. You know. Yeah, it's like, pretty dirty and everything looks pretty much like you probably wouldn't eat it in the Western world. But once you dive into it, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, the yeah. Western word belly cannot handle some of those. <laughs> so. no, yeah, it's, it's pretty common. I was very lucky that I, I, I only got a little taste. I was I was I, I enjoyed it a lot. I yeah, spent that's six awesome. months there. So, oh, yeah. wow. That's awesome. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so the next question here is what is the last great book or article that you read? The last great, ooh, I just finished a book. Um, it's called The Spiritual Entrepreneur. So, ooh. yeah, so it's about, well, I don't know what it's about. It's like spirituality, but from um, looking at it from if you're a business, if you're a leader or an entrepreneur, business owner, um, how, how those two are interlinked. Um, and it was really good, very inspiring. Well, it... <laughs> 
it had a lot of really key, um, good keynotes that I was like, oh, good takeaways. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then other than that, that's more from a business point of view. And then just watch a really cool um, online series about maps to nowhere called it's a surf series on YouTube. Huh. It's just about these uncharted areas of the world that people are going surfing and they don't say the name. So I couldn't tell you where they were, but it was pretty cool. Wow. That's super cool. Well, and I, this is the question I was going to throw in is where's the best place you've ever surfed? Um, yeah, it's going to be probably in favorite place because of familiarity is going to be like places I've been to, right? Like Nicaragua, Barbados and Costa Rica. Um, but best waves I've ever seen or had the chance to surf would be Indonesia, you know? Definitely. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Well, you go there and you're there for a few months and you finally you get kind of comfortable, but obviously um, you can't really be uh, like, I know I'm like very Nicaragua focused right now, but you know, the uncrowded waves here. So you can always like, surf alone and just surf with your friends and stuff like that. And that's just, that's what really is magical or surf, you know, in our case with the guests and the vibes are nice, you know, because surfing is a very, how can you say it's like, it's a very territorial kind of sport in some respects, or it has a lot of things around it. So depending on where you go, um, it has that type of thing. So it's, it's nice to surf just with nice people and good locals. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like that would be fair, especially if you're not as like an avid of a surfer, like it, it, you just like being around more people would just be scary. And then they'd probably get like angry at you and you're like, I don't want to do that. So where the vibes are good. I like that. The vibes are good. And yeah, that's the most important thing. No matter what the vibes have to be good, you know? Yeah. It comes from the people in that, in that area or, or whoever, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, that's There's super always, cool. You know, nature's always going to be friendly to you. Exactly. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So beautifully said. Um, so last question here. It's one of my favorites is what is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you while traveling? The crazy, every craziest thing has ever happened to me while traveling. Um, that's a really good question. I haven't thought about that for so long. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky one. I can tell you the craziest thing I ever did was do go bungee jumping, um, uh, in Australia. I was going to say, was it in Australia? Yeah, <laughs> I was like 20. And that's only crazy because I'm terrified of heights. So it was really, it was a tricky one. Um, <laughs> but craziest thing, man, there's been, there's been so many epic journeys. You know, I did two trips around the world, you know, um, pre-university and post-university and quite a bit of time in Asia and stuff. And just so much random stuff happens to you, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I can imagine. Like the most random places, random things going on. So um so yeah that's it you know i think always the craziest stories probably come out of india ultimately because interesting yeah it's just the, it's the craziest place on the planet to, at least when i went you know it was the craziest place on the planet to travel to you know like just like chaotic and chaos chaos it's like, <laughs> I, a, I, I can tell you one quick story i arrived in india with ex-girlfriend of mine she's blonde you know and i look a little bit indian lucky as dark skin whatever and we get to this hostel, which was supposed to be a hostel, but it's in debt in Bombay. And it was the dirtiest place ever. So, you know, we pulled out strong and just slept on this tiny bed, just the two of us just waiting for, you know, the next day to come. And <laughs> then we wanted to get out of there, you know, as quick as possible. So we went to the train station, you know, we're still in the, we've been in Indonesia for a while. So we kind of were used to the whole, um, how chaotic things can be. So we asked the guy, how were the trains? So we get, anyway, we get to the train station. I'm trying to figure it all out. We buy the tickets and like, okay, we're waiting for the train and the train's supposed to take us wherever without, I have no idea what happened. We see the train coming and first things first, the train was packed. I mean, on the train, out the train, on the side of the train. So I was like, well, we can't fit on that train. The second thing was, was that as soon as the train got close, like hundreds of people came out of nowhere and tried to jump on the train. So you know, we're getting like knocked out, whatever, to get on this train. And then, you know, somehow we managed to get on this, this, this train. And we're sat there as our first day in India. <laughs> guy comes by, you know, we're kind of stressed out. We're kind of on high alert. And this guy comes by in a big turban and the train actually was going all the way up to, I think somewhere in the mountains. And he comes by and he had a sword and he comes by oh. he's next to an Indian. just don't have any uh, respect to the personal space. You know, they're like, very close all the time and he sits right next to us and he's like so how do you feel in india and i was like 
not I feel good no thanks now the not so good <laughs> not good but you know now you ask that question so yeah that was probably you know yeah but then that led on to so many other different things in India <laughs> I know I would just be like what is happening yeah. <laughs> but after six months you're like you just you're just so used to it all it was amazing you know it's just how, how we can adapt you know yeah that, and that's why travel is so important just seeing yeah. the world it's so there's all the different things so all that's things. crazy yeah and, and yeah yeah it's cool really cool yeah. That's awesome. It sounds like you could probably write a book one day about, especially going around the world twice, probably yeah. good stories. Yeah, good stories. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, very lucky. Very blessed, you know, come from a, yeah, very lucky to be able to do that because not everyone has that opportunity. So mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And thank you so much for, yeah, sharing all of that with us. And it's super cool to hear about everything you're doing now and um, with Rise Up and all that good stuff. And thank you everyone also for tuning in to this episode of the Lounge of Travify Academy. And of course, thanks again to our special guest, Philip, for joining us here today. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes. And we hope you enjoyed our conversation today and join us again but for now stay safe and we'll catch you on the next flight